going through. No answer. Good morning. Today we celebrate the last day of May, and it's no accident that on the last day of May, a month dedicated to Mary, that the church has uh, set the celebration of the Feast of the Visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. So let us begin by singing verses uh, one in English and then one in Latin from O Santissimo. O most virtuous and most Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, do not, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. 
He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my savior. I'm, I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Among, Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday in the homily, we are in this time, this in-between time between the Ascension and Pentecost. And this is a time for us each to be doing spiritual preparation for the Holy Spirit. Of course, we all received the Holy Spirit when we were baptized. We got a deeper portion of the Holy Spirit when we were confirmed. And every time we receive a sacrament worthily, we are receiving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's, the light of the Holy Spirit within us is being supercharged when we receive sacraments worthily. Uh, we think about the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost and being poured out on the apostles in the upper room. But we also find out, and some maybe surprisingly, that the Holy Spirit's been operative in our world really from the very beginning, from the creation of the world. And we hear the Holy Spirit explicitly mentioned in the visitation and the key reading which precedes it, which is the Annunciation. In the Annunciation, uh, the angel tells Mary, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And Mary didn't say, well, wait, I didn't think the Holy Spirit was coming until Pentecost. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. 
and the child to be born will be called the Son of the Most High. So Mary became pregnant by the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that we all got at Pentecost. Mary got when Jesus was born in her womb. And so the Holy Spirit enabled Mary to be a bearer of Jesus to the world, which is the same thing the Spirit allows us to do, to be a bearer of Jesus in the world. That's our mission. We bring Jesus into our world because we carry him in our hearts. And Mary also, after being uh, impregnated with, uh, by the Holy Spirit with Jesus, what does she do? She visits, she goes out. I'm sure she had some time of personal prayer and reflection. That's even indicated in the Annunciation story. But then she goes out. She says, I've got Jesus in me. I've got to bring Jesus into the world. If we thought about that every time we went to a visit, a family member or a friend or something in our community, or for those of you who are Eucharistic ministers or visit the sick or whatever it may be, I'm bringing Jesus to this person. If we had that mindset, it would really transform the way we, I think, the way we act and the way we feel about the blessing we've been given. It turns out Mary's not the only one with the Holy Spirit because the scripture passage in the visitation says Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, which she wasn't supposed to get till Pentecost, right? Filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So because Elizabeth has the Holy Spirit, she's able to recognize Jesus present in Mary, which is another great gift of the Spirit, to recognize Jesus present in people, even in people that it's not always easy for us to recognize Jesus in. It may be difficult people. And, and the Holy Spirit gives us the gift to recognize Jesus in people. And finally, Mary fills with the Holy Spirit then proclaims the greatness of the Lord and magnifies the Lord in this beautiful prayer. When we have the Holy Spirit and we see God at work, the only response we can have is gratitude and to magnify God and say, how can you be so good to me? I am not worthy of any of these blessings, but you pour them out upon me. So when you put all of this together, you see the Holy Spirit allows us to bear Jesus into the world sends us forth, pushes us out to visit, to bring Jesus to others, enables us to see Jesus in others, and enables us to talk, proclaim, be grateful, and magnify God. Which is why we need to prepare in a particular way for Pentecost, when we remember and celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit some 2,000 years ago upon the apostles, upon the church, upon us and the world, the gift we got in baptism. We have all these gifts inside of us. So there's no reason why we should not be bearers of Jesus in our world, uh, people who see Jesus in our world, and people who proclaim and magnify Jesus in our world as we visit others. That's our goal and our mission. It's clearly the whole purpose of celebrating the visitation today. So we ask you, Lord, in these days of preparation for Pentecost, help us to recognize we've got the Holy Spirit, and it's time for us to, to be like Mary and Elizabeth and let the Holy Spirit shine forth in our world. Please stand as we bring our prayers and needs to God, our Heavenly Father. For the church, may God give her the grace to be a joy-filled presence in our world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit grant them the wisdom to govern wisely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all struggling with difficult family relationships, may the Holy Spirit guide them in reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this final day of Mary's special month, we pray that Our Lady will intercede that we might be a pro-life people in our nation. We pray for our deceased loved ones, especially those whose names are on our Easter Memorial Board. We also pray for uh, the victims of the school shooting uh, in Texas. And we pray for all of the people in our parish, with several people today, who are undergoing surgery and other medical procedures. So for all of them, that they may have good, good success in healing. And for all of our personal intentions, we invite our spiritual mother to pray with us and for us, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And may God hear and answer all the prayers we have made through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our offering of this sacred sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord, as you are pleased to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just and duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for all by my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. All generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O God, for you have done great things for your faithful. And as St. John the Baptist left with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And uh, we will pray in day five of the Dominion of the Holy Spirit, which will happen right after the, the final blessing of the end of things. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. Thank you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast us without Satan and all evil spirits 